Today, we will talk about the seventh Imam, Imam Musa Qazim. He was born in Medina on 7 Safar, 128 Hijri. Imam Musa ibn Jafar was born during the struggle between the Umayyads and the Abbasids. He was only four years old when Abu Abbas Safa, the shedder of blood, came to the throne as the first Abbasid Caliph. For 20 years, he was under the authority of his father, who died 10 years before the end of the long reign of Mansur. The Imamat of the seventh Imam extended through the 10 remaining years of the Caliphate of Mansur and included the 10 years of the rule of Mehdi, one year and some months of Hadi, and about 12 years of the reign of Harun al-Rashid. Thus, for 35 years he was the Imam. He held this coveted distinction as the longest period of Imamat of the 11 Imams. They misunderstood the whole concept of Imamat, which was neither hereditary nor mandatory for any one person. It was divinely selected and the Imam at his deathbed reveals the name of the next Imam. The Caliphs were on the alert to discover any real or imaginary disloyalty to the Caliphate from the Imam or his followers and they would immediately put them under arrest. This natural anxiety, however, does not appear to have seriously interrupted his life as an Imam. He continued to teach Quranic teachings as his father Imam Jafar Sadiq used to do through the Islamic schools open in Medina during the life of the fifth Imam. From time to time, the Imams were brought in from Medina, kept in Baghdad either on house arrest or inside prisons under the most difficult of conditions. But it was the Imam's great divine characters that managed to keep them going in the most severe of conditions. It was widely known that Imam Musa ibn Jafar had been given powers of healing. Once he was passing by a house and heard little children weeping. He inquired as to why they were crying. He was told that they were orphans and their mother had just died and now they had no one to look after them. He went inside the house, made two prostrations and prayed to God for a life. Moments later, the woman stood up well in good health. Imam Musa ibn Jafar was one of the illustrious Imams who God had set a paragon of moral excellence. Each member of this noble family possessed virtues. The seventh Imam excelled in tolerance and forgiveness, so much so that he was entitled al Ghazim the suppressor of anger. Never was he heard speaking roughly or harshly to anyone, even in the most unpleasant situations. He was seen smiling, bearing the pain gracefully. This was in accordance with the saying of his ancestor, Imam Ali salam, that the faithful keeps his grief confined in his heart with a smile on his face. One state official of Medina was a persistent source of harassment to the Imam. He even used abusive language regarding Imam Ali But our seventh Imam always directed his followers not to retaliate in the same abusive manner. When his manner became too rude to be tolerated, Imam's followers sought permission from the Imam to retaliate against him. The Imam appeased them, promising to decide the matter in his own way. Pacifying his followers, the Imam went to that man on his farm and treated with him such noble benevolence that the man felt ashamed of his conduct and subsequently changed his attitude and altered his conduct. Explaining his policy to his followers, the Imam asked, was my behavior better than the methods you suggested? They admitted that it certainly was. This was a noble method usually adopted by all members of Ahl Bayt. Imam Ali salam, even on his deathbed, behaved liberally with Ibn Mujin, who had dealt him a mortal blow only the day before. Imam Musa ibn Jafar salam, showered his generosity on many of his relatives, even when he knew that some of them were envious of him and conspired with the ruler of the time, Harun al-Rashid. 
As to what may have led to his final imprisonment, we find that it is stated by Al-Faqri that there were some of the relatives of Musa ibn Jafar who were enemies of him and carried false reports about him to Al-Rashid, saying, Musa Qasim is about to revolt against you. It was in that year that Al-Rashid went on the pilgrimage and when he arrived in Medina, he arrested the Imam Musa ibn Jafar, brought him to Baghdad and imprisoned him under the care of Al-Sindi ibn Shahid. He was put in prison there under the watchful eye of the cruelest person named Al-Sindi. Majlisi goes on to say that the Imam died in his prison and was buried in a cemetery of Quraysh on the south side of Baghdad. The place he was buried was a cemetery of the Quraysh. But soon, this place became the focus of pilgrimage on the grave of the Imam. A town grew around the graveyard. The name of the town became Qazimiyah, the town of Imam Qazim. A reputed school of theology was founded in this town which is still a source of learning for many students from all over the world.